So what we're going to work on today is what is called Blue Water Balls Kitchen Chemistry. This is all going to be done in the kitchen. Uh, it's very, very safe chemistry. Here you can see actually uh, me holding some of the water balls. Uh, they're a very light tinge of blue. It will become obvious as we conduct the experiment. Even though the solution itself is, is blue, uh, there's only a very, very light tinge of blue in those water balls. But these are actually only last a few seconds before they collapse. And you can see here the water running off my hand as these actual water balls just collapse within a few seconds as they come out of the water. Um, if you hold them out of the water for too long, the, the water network just falls apart. So it's called the Bemuse reaction and it's very simple kitchen chemistry. We're going to use a jug of water, a bowl of water, um, some borax laundry detergent which you could find in almost any store really, uh, any grocery store. Just ask, if you can't find it, just ask them to find it for you and they'll, they'll point you to it. Some white vinegar, some table salt, uh, some bemuse catalyst. I'll give a whole separate presentation on that. That's a different uh, path to get to that particular catalyst. Uh, so I want to dedicate a separate uh, presentation to that. We're also going to uh, ask you to find some uh, spherical magnets, but they have to be rare earth magnets. These are not uh, standard ferromagnets uh, that are made out of out of iron. Um, we want you preferably to find the samarium cobalt ones. They're very easy to find. The cobalt iron particularly is going to help extend the network and, and create these larger water balls. Literally, once you got the materials, about a minute to prepare, and I'll show you this later in a video, and about 24 hours to, to um, have the entire effect develop. So the rare earth magnets are very cheap to buy. Uh, here's from eBay. Uh, these are not the spherical magnets, but um, $5.10 for 10 of these magnets. We're only going to need one. And uh, if you want to know about samarium cobalt magnets, go read the Wikipedia article. It'll tell you a lot more about them. The primary compound of interest here to form this extended network is actually going to be the borax. And here we show a large crystal of borax. The laundry detergent is going to be powdered. Um, as you can tell here, commercially sold borax is usually partially dehydrated. We're going to take advantage of this uh, when we immerse it in water in the presence of, of a magnet, a seed magnet that's dissolving in the presence of some white vinegar. Uh, and we have some sodium chloride and some of the muse, bemuse catalyst. This network that you can see here, this molecular network that is developed in the presence of water and the borax, uh, is going to extend very, very dramatically. It's going to be a very, very large network. This is at the molecular level, but you're going to see this on a much larger level. Um, it does say here, if you notice in the Wikipedia article, that uh, usually borax comes as the decahydrate. That means 10 waters of hydration, but the commercially sold borax is only p is partially dehydrated. That's the phenomenon that we actually need from the from the borax. Uh, the water solvation shell. So, so this is a phenomenon of how water orients itself around bare ions. In this case, we have sodium chloride, and what we see here is the waters uh, orienting around the iron. Um, and yet, when you add the rare earth mag magnetic uh, ions that are going to come from the the sphere that is going to dissolve in the presence of the vinegar, uh, they they solvate the uh, the various ions. They build up into this extended network, as you saw in borax. And it's the presence of the magnetic ions that are going to extend these these very large polarized water chains so that they build up. Uh, this is shown diagrammatically here when we look at extended water lattices. Here you've got sodium chloride again. And you see the orientation of the waters around the chloride ion here, the Cl minus, and the sodium ions, the Na plus. But what happens is in the presence of, of the cobalt, the samarium, and the boron network, is these things grow out very, very dramatically. And what we're forming here is dendromeric, um, dendromeric spheres. Uh, they're magnetically centered with these seeds from the iron. Uh, where they're multi-generational, so you can see here we ha we come out from multi-generational, and these things just continue to grow out and out and out. Eventually, they do do reach a saturation point where the spheres actually cannot um, cannot grow any further. Uh, and that that just happens. Uh, it can be anywhere between seven to ten hours. It depends on what type of ions we use, uh, the concentration, the conductivity. Uh, but this is pretty much irrelevant for the work we're going to do today. We're not going to measure these things. We're just going to have some fun. This, after all, is is kitchen chemistry. So the magnetic centers right here, as you can see diagrammatically um, represented, is uh, it's this magnetic center. And the presence of the boron network around it that, that allows these uh, these dendromeric chains to grow. We're going to catalyze the reaction. Um, initially, we've got to catalyze the dissolving of the of the samarium uh, 
that cobalt magnet and here we, here we see a little chain of them you, you just snap one off this chain these are just magnets that are held together the vinegar is going to uh, to dissolve the surface and then it's just going to start um, dissolving out into the solution so that's all really the, the, the vinegar is there for just to rip off the surface and then this catalyst as I was mentioning it's a copper catalyst uh, it, it is the presence actually assists dissolution and helps initiate the aggregation of the of the ions uh, and the borax around the magnetic center uh, it's very simple to synthesize it's a nice green uh, blue crystals and I'm going to describe that in a separate video I'll, I'll try and get that one done overnight so that's the bemuse bemuse reaction and uh, let's get it going all right then, so now we're ready to do the boron enhanced magnetic extension water sphere experiment. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work with borax and I'm not doing free advertising for anybody. So I'm calling this blue ball borax for now. Uh, these are the rare earth magnets that I was talking about. Uh, and you know, they come like this. We're just going to take one of these as the seed. We've got some salt. Uh, standard common table salt and it's that's to enhance the conductivity of the solution and to make sure that the uh, the various um, ions that come off the rare earth magnet are going to diffuse uh, to create these ionized magnetic centers that the dendrometric water molecules are going to form around to create these spheres we've got some very common white vinegar uh, standard bottle of white vinegar we're going to use this it's a very weak acid and we're going to use this to to simply strip the surface off the off the magnetic sphere to to initiate dissolution into the into the um, water and here uh, we have the copper complex that I was telling you about uh, I'll go through some detail in a separate video about how to make this copper complex but it's a uh, it's very simple you got everything at home to do this uh, and we'll go through that separately so that's it borax we're going to take one of the rare earth magnets common table salt vinegar and this uh, particular copper complex So we're ready to do the experiment. Uh, what we have here is one teaspoon of borax. Just throw it in. There's no rush to do this. This is uh, all cold water temperature. And we're not going to heat it up or anything. We've got the salt. Uh, literally, it doesn't matter how much. Just you know, just a pinch of salt, really, just to get the conductivity up because the magnetic ions have to move around. We're going to drop in at this point one of the rare earth magnets. And I pointed these out before. This is just going to dissolve up with a little bit of vinegar. This is again just to take the uh, do a little bit of corrosion on the the outside of the magnet and start the uh, process. So we'll just throw in a little bit of white white vinegar. Don't expect anything dramatic. This is not going to effervesce or, stuff or anything. And then the copper complex that I was telling you about that we created, and I'll do that in a separate video. And we're just going to put a little bit of this in. Ah, it doesn't really matter. Let's put. Now, it's quite spectacular to actually watch this, but all we're going to do right now is stir it in. It will go clear. Everything will dissolve. And within 24 hours, we should be able to see our magnets. And as you can tell, that is a magnet. Look. Drop it back in. Let's see what happens in 24 hours. So this is it. Uh, here we are, about 24 hours later. These are these are water spheres that have been enhanced with boron-centered magnetization centers, and that there we can see. We've got to be careful because if I hold them out too long, they're just going to collapse. But that's that's pretty cool. I think you'd agree. Um, copper catalyzed boron-enhanced magnetic water spheres. Uh, and that is the Bemuse reaction.